Right now at noon, Arkansas's fiscal session is well underway at the state capitol. A closer look at the proposed state budget. Plus, the Little Rock City Board will consider a plan to combat violent crime tonight. The price tag? $1.5 million. We'll explain how the money will be spent if approved. And electronics made from masks? Yep. How one company is finding new life for pandemic medical waste. And a former North Little Rock student makes it to the Super Bowl halftime show. The part she played coming up a little later in the show. Thanks for joining us here on THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Michael Aaron. Meteorologist Nathan Scott is over in the Weather Center. I mean, you see this just absolute gorgeous it's blue beautiful. sky. Yes. A wonderful day. So, so very different compared to this day exactly one year ago. One year ago, we were trapped here at the station <laughs> and we were staying the night in a hotel for several days. And that's because we had our first round of snow make its way through central Arkansas. And then a couple days later, we had our second round of snow. So here are the snowfall grand totals in case you forgot one to two feet from Little Rock all the way down through Arkadelphia, right along Interstate 30, lesser amounts to the north and also to the southeast. But man, today it's certainly a taste of spring in the air. 64 is the number right now at the Little Rock Airport, 63 in Clinton, a few clouds down to the south and southwest. Also on the breezy side, those winds kicking in from the south and southwest about 10 to as high as 20 miles per hour with even some higher gusts. That's going to send the numbers up into the upper 60s to lower 70s across the area. So get outside and enjoy it because the weather does change going into Wednesday night and throughout the day on Thursday. A cold front is going to swing its way through right now. It's a slim to low risk of severe weather, but I'll have more on the breakdown and show you what radar could look like with this next event coming up. All right, Nathan, state legislators are back at the Capitol this afternoon. They're diving into nearly 100 budget bills as part of this year's fiscal session. It kicked off yesterday. Governor Asa Hutchinson presented his proposed budget. It would fund a wide range of things, including education, health care, and public safety. During his State of the State address, the governor put a special focus on law enforcement. Under the proposal, every city and county law enforcement officer would receive a one-time payment of $5,000. That amounts to a total of $45 million. He also mentioned the equipment requests from city and county agencies come out to several million dollars, which he wants to tackle that. We're talking about a lot of money here, but the governor emphasizes that the funds are available. And even with those spending priorities, we will continue to have a healthy surplus. Most importantly, this session will be remembered for our support of law enforcement. Governor Hutchinson touched on it there, but all the money would come from the state's $500 million surplus from last year. Lawmakers in both chambers will look at dozens of bills this afternoon. Those include several focused on other issues like abortion and reimbursing local law enforcement for housing state prisoners in county jails. We're following the session closely. We'll have the latest for you tonight at five and six. Several protesters are facing charges after interrupting the governor's address yesterday. The group was at the Capitol voicing opposition of the plan to expand capacity at one of Arkansas's prisons. Dozens of protesters were escorted out of the Capitol. The Secretary of State's office tells THV 11 at least two people were arrested and charged with disorderly conduct. Happening today, the Little Rock City Board will look at new ways to reduce crime. That includes a proposed $1.5 million plan. The resolution comes as violent crime in the city continues to rise. Little Rock is looking to enter into contracts with 10 organizations to combat that. According to the resolution, it's part of an effort to increase positive outcomes and overall quality of life. There's a focus on so-called hotspots identified by LRPD. Funding will come from the American Rescue Plan. The board will also consider a proposal to bring back the Bridge to Work program, a partnership with Canvas Community Church. It pays people experiencing homelessness to pick up trash in the city. Church leaders have touted its success in not only providing work, but also connecting people with social services. We'll have more from that meeting tonight at 10. There are signs that diplomacy is not yet off the table to avoid a war between Russia and Ukraine, but Russia's actions are still being questioned this afternoon. Skyler Henry has the latest from the White House. Russia's defense minister announced its forces near the border with Ukraine will march home as soon as its large-scale military exercises are over. It strains credulity to think that they would have this many troops a raid along the border with Ukraine and in Belarus simply for 
winter exercises. The Russian military released this video. It says shows tank units heading home. And President Vladimir Putin told German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that he's ready to negotiate with NATO and the U.S. There are signs from Moscow that uh, diplomacy should continue. This gives grounds for cautious optimism. But so far, we have not seen any sign of de-escalation on the ground. These satellite images show a deployment of a new helicopter squadron and soldiers to Belgorod, Russia, just 24 miles from the border with Ukraine. And a U.S. official tells CBS News that Russia has now moved rocket launchers and long-range artillery into firing positions. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with his Russian counterpart today, and President Biden talked with French President Emmanuel Macron. But the U.S. believes a Russian attack is much more likely than its European allies do. The thing that causes the concern is the just mass array of forces uh, around Ukraine, particularly in Belarus near Kyiv. There's still a good bit of difference between how the U.S. perceives that and the way, for example, our European allies do. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin left Washington this morning to hold talks with NATO allies in Belgium. He'll also visit with U.S. troops deployed to Lithuania and Poland during his European trip. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. The State Department issued two new travel warnings. The U.S. is now advising Americans avoid travel to Belarus and Moldova. Both countries are friendly with Russia and could be used to launch attacks into Ukraine. Tensions overseas are also having an impact right here on our wallets in the U.S. You probably noticed that you're paying more at the pump right now. Gas prices are the highest they've been since 2014. According to AAA, the national average price per gallon jumped to $3.49 in the last week. That's 19 cents more than just a month ago, nearly a dollar more than a year ago. Prices of most things are up, but <clears throat> for most things like groceries, they're up about 7%, right? Gas prices are up like 50% over the past year, and that really hits your budget. It's not something people were expecting. The main cause of this recent increase is the high cost of crude oil. It's now more than $90 a barrel. More than half the cost of gas we pay is dependent on that price of crude oil, and Russia produces more than one-tenth of the world's supply oil supply, I should say. So any military action by Russia could send the price of oil over $100 a barrel. While the U.S. is not a major importer of Russian oil, if the global market value of a barrel jumps, we will likely see a domino effect and Americans will feel it at the pump. Let's turn our attention now to COVID-19 in Arkansas. Our numbers show two sides of the same story. When you look at our new cases, active cases and hospitalizations, you see that we're recovering from last month's surge caused by the Omicron variant. Right now, 16,000 people are still dealing with COVID in Arkansas. That number has not been that low since December 29th. A little more than 1,000 Arkansans are still in the hospital this afternoon. While these uh, are positive trends, trends in the right direction, we're still feeling the impact of the surge uh, of our COVID deaths or on our COVID deaths. Another 32 people have died from complications of the virus. That number has always been a lagging indicator of the severity of each spike. Hope to see it go back down in the coming days. COVID cases continue to fall in the U.S., but controversy surrounding masks is not letting up. Laura Podesta has the latest on the back and forth. COVID was the second leading cause of death in January in the U.S., overtaking cancer, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. Still, COVID cases are falling. The seven-day average is now just over 175,000, down more than 78% since the Omicron peak in January. I think at some point the American public is just losing it in terms of saying, you know, we just don't have the fortitude. Dr. John Swartzberg studies infectious diseases at UC Berkeley. With more than 16,000 deaths nationwide this past week, he believes masks are still necessary, but that some politicians are removing the requirement to appease frustrated constituents. But I think the politicians are sensing that and they're making a decision based upon that. In the last week, 11 states have announced they're rolling back mask mandates. A CBS News poll shows a majority of Americans still support those mandates. In California, the mask requirement for indoor public places is set to expire today. Health officials announced masking inside schools will continue at least until the end of the month. We are taking a little bit more time to consider the information, work with our partners across the state to make sure 
when the move is made, that we are do doing it successfully and uh, with communities empowered to continue to be safe. Many states are waiting until the youngest Americans can get vaccines before dropping masks in school. On Friday, Pfizer said it needs more time to gather trial data before seeking FDA emergency use authorization for children under five. Laura Podesta, CBS News. How about some good news here? The American Academy of Pediatrics reports the number of new COVID cases among kids is down nearly 53% from last week.